It is time for the next BTS vlog. Uh, I didn't come back in a couple of hours like the way I said I was to start the uh, Monday BTS vlog. It is, uh, well, <laughs> it's, uh, I'll give you the time and date stamp so we know what time it is. It's 5 hours and 22 minutes into the day of Tuesday, December 24th. That's right, it's, uh, the day before Christmas. Christmas Eve. Well, not quite Christmas Eve, but, <laughs> uh, Close enough, anyways. I was supposed to start the vlog, the uh, BTS vlog for uh, December 23rd and 24th, a uh, couple hours ago, but well, four hour, four or five hours ago. But uh, I never got to do that. Uh, things as usual uh, changed, and I ended up uh, going out with my parents to uh, lunch. Because uh, a large chunk of Toronto, including my parents, are without power. <laughs> There's no electricity, and they were starting to get cold and hungry. And so they came to pick me up. And we went to eat. Forgot to start the timer. We'll approximate this. We'll see if we should we should be able to, we should be okay. Anyways, we went out to eat. Got home. I was feeling a little under the weather, but I just finished doing. Out, I finished putting out uh, uh, the uh, BTS vlog for December sixteenth and, and and seventeenth. I'm now editing uh, the BTS vlogs for seventeen to, to twenty, and hopefully I'll get that done for today, sometime later today. And I'm going to keep working all the way through the. Uh, Christmas vacation. I'm not going to be taking a vacation. I, I spend most of my time at the research desk anyway, so... And it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not that someone somebody is chaining me to the desk here and forcing me to stay. I do like what I do, you know, and it's not the the long hours has nothing to do with that someone is forcing me to stay here. It's more of an obsessive type of thing where, uh, as I said before, the when you're doing research, you're looking for pieces of a puzzle. And these pieces are literally scattered all over the world. And you have no idea where you're going to find them or when you're going to find them. When you start finding chunks and pieces that are good, you don't want to stop because that means you're on a streak. You're, 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 hey, you're, you're bringing in good material. You're getting, you're, you're getting those pieces of the puzzles that the pieces of the puzzle that you need. And so you don't want to stop. So you can go, oh, Few more minutes, few more minutes. But the thing is, you don't realize that those few more minutes that you're talking about are actually hours. And uh, by the time you do get to the point where uh, it's not that you want to give up, you just physically can't go any further. And people say to me, "Well, why don't you go home? And you know, why do you stay at your place? Why do you, you know, do a lot of these different things?" Because it, it appears to be that I'm living in this place. Well, I am and I'm not. What happens is, at the end of a research session, because of the way research goes, because you don't stop until you're physically exhausted, you're too tired to drive. You, you can't go anywhere. The, the only place you can go, as if it's a few steps away, is you get up and you stagger over to your bed and you drop in your bed, you don't change your clothes, and you go to sleep. That's, and that's kind of the way it is. That's kind of... And, and the thing is, if you're on a good enough research tangent, in other words, you're good in a good enough research field, uh, the way I am in, 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 uh, in quantum physics and astrophysics, where you get to explore the entire universe. And so, basically, I get to study anything I want to study. You know, literally take that random walk and see where it takes me. But what that means is that there's no off time. There's no uh, 9 to 5. It's 24-7. It's, it's whenever you're awake. And more often than that, it, it comes with you into your sleep. So, you wind up in a situation where what you're seeing here, where you're seeing the 4 o'clock in the morning starts, you're seeing the, the, uh, uh, the finishing at noon, finishing at 8, you know, finishing at all hours. In other words, there is no set time when I start, there's no set time when I finish. Uh, and what happens is, if you get to know this, 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 this is routine for me. This is my my routine. 
And so my life is far from normal, far from what the average life is. And this kind of, you know, if this is something you enjoy, in terms of you enjoy doing this type of work, then that's great. But if you don't enjoy doing the work, then that's uh, another thing entirely. But the thing is, I do enjoy the work. Uh, I don't mind getting tired uh, from the work that I'm doing. And so it, it, it's something that, that, you know, it. I don't mind getting this exhausted. I don't mind getting this tired. What I am doing is, if, if you look at this, I am, although this is, this is past tense because uh, I'm already applying it to the videos that I'm editing. Uh, I've been changing the graphics around to sort of make things look better. I've been working on making sure that the graphics, when they scale up to the big screen TV, are uh, of a higher quality. And this takes some going doing takes some doing. So what happens when you're doing these adjustments, when you're doing these things, anything that's on the editing bay that you plan to move forward, you're holding back until you get, make sure that what you're doing is right. So a lot of the chunk of the a large chunk of these minute details, the, the sort of extra editing type of stuff, uh, goes on here in BTS logs. BTS logs is where you're supposed to study, where you're supposed to experiment and stuff. Once you're done with the work with the BTS logs and you're satisfied where where, where the BTS logs are then that technique migrates out to the other shows. And, uh, and that means that includes the Kitchen Diner, which is coming up. There will be some test segments coming in uh, sometime either this week or next week. It, <coughs> it really depends. I was going to do this week, but the problem is that there's, there's a weak power grid here because of the uh, power outages, because of the ice storm. And I'm thinking I'm going to wait till next week when uh, there is a better, <coughs> uh, better uh, uh, power situation, so that uh, I'm careful here. Make sure I don't put too many lights on. Too much, you know. I don't put too much stress on the system, so uh, you know, I keep my lights on. <laughs> uh, so I think I'm gonna be holding off on the test uh, shoots for uh, Kitchen Diner until next week because they're not going to be finished the work until Saturday or Sunday. In other words, they're going to be working into the weekend to sort of get all the power back on. Oh, and that's kind of to determine what's going to happen when. Anyways, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get caught up on the uh, on the BTS logs here. Make sure that everything's in order and then go from there. Alrighty, take it easy. I'll see you in a bit. When and how I choose to vlog, as often depends on how I feel, and uh, right now I feel like vlogging. <laughs> All right, it's um, six. It's no, it's 18 hours and 35 minutes into the day of Tuesday, December 24th, 2013. That means it's officially Christmas Eve. Uh, I should say New Christmas Eve because there are two Christmases. There is the New Christmas. Which is the December twenty fifth, or standard, or, or the we call the common Christmas, and then there's an older Christmas on January seventh, celebrated by the Eastern Christians. Um, and was celebrated up until uh, basically basically the eighteen hundreds uh, by the Americans, uh, the English and the Americans. Uh, this is why it's called Old Christmas. Uh, it's also known as George Washington's George Washington's Christmas because George Washington, when he celebrated Christmas, uh, it was under a different calendar, and there's a thirteen day, 13 day difference between uh, the older calendar and the newer calendar. And at that time, the December twenty fifth date of Christmas now falls on January seventh, so that's why it's Old Christmas. And the thing is, is that the calendar that we're talking about is the Julian calendar. It is, uh, you, <laughs> euphemistically called, uh, the old calendar. And I say euphemistically because there, there is a large, well, a pretty good attempt at, at sort of marginalizing the calendar. And anyone who chooses to, uh, follow it as such. 
But what happens is if you go in and you study the history of the Julian calendar, what you begin to realize is that this was a Ptolemaic calendar coming from um, ancient Egypt, and that calendar wasn't a solar calendar, it was an astronomical calendar. It was the calendar that was used to align the pyramids when they constructed the pyramids. So, uh, when you go forward to today's archaeology and you, you hear about the accuracy of the Mayan calendar, you go into the archaeology and look at the, uh, uh, the look at the accuracy of uh, the uh, Hindu um, uh, temple construction according to uh, astronomical alignment, uh, and understand that that they understood uh, movements of the sky in, in, in ways that we wouldn't understand until much later on. Uh, then you begin to realize that the uh, old calendar. Uh, is not something to be dismissed lightly, as many people would. This is what I was talking about earlier with with uh, with Miles about Miles Power, uh, and I've decided as part of BTS vlogs that uh, I will bring in some of the preliminary notes that will become part of the Insta vlogs uh, into here. It just add more content in here, so. You have something to talk about on a daily basis and produce about a half hour every day. Uh, but as I was saying, the whole issue I was talking about with my, my, uh, was, was about, my, about Miles Power and these whole whole thing about the EDU guru. Uh, if you dismiss offhand information that you assume to be correct simply because that's the way you view it, and you have it, 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 the and you haven't viewed everything there is to view on this thing. And there is no way to view everything there is to view on this because basically, uh, according to uh, modern understanding of, uh, of physics and of the universe at large, uh, if you consider dark matter to be something significant and real, then we are only looking at uh, on average, 5% of the universe. So if you can see the entire universe, you get the entire universe out there, we can see the entire universe from beginning to end. When we can't, we can't, we haven't got that far. Then you're only seeing 5% of the actual universe because the rest of the, the, rest of the 95%, and that's on average, because it, some people say it's 94%, some people say it was 96%, so let's take the middle ground and go with 95%. Uh, that... It's in, a, it's in a form that we cannot directly measure. We can indirectly measure it, just the way uh, we can indirectly determine if a black hole is present at the core of a star or the present at, at, at the core of a particular object that we're looking at, I should say. Uh, if you're looking at an object and you're uh, measuring that object, you can do that with, uh, with, with spectroscopy. And you see that in your spectroscopy, the lines that you have indicate that there is a strong gravitational pull inwards. And that there is a hole at the center of that particular object you're looking at. A black hole. In other words, you're not seeing the hole itself, but you're seeing the dust that's swirling around this, this hole. Or the, or, or the material, should I say, the material that's uh, orbiting oh, around this hole. That is the definition of a black hole. That's our current definition of a black hole. And because we, can, we, can, we can't actually see the black hole itself, we can only see the effects on the surrounding space. And this, is, this becomes analogous to uh, this whole thing with, my, with, with Miles Power and making assumptions that you know everything and that therefore something else that you view as incorrect uh, is uh, worthless and should be ignored. Even when something is 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 wrong, and this is that they say they say you find something that's morally wrong with a particular person or what the person says, doesn't necessarily mean what they have to say itself is worthless. I mean, you you can take a, you can take a lot from somebody's uh, uh, opinion, understanding of a particular moral. Let's say you're talking about morals here, right and wrong, you know, good and bad. There's a lot to be said for that because because when you, you you because one of the things you need to look at if you if you really are working towards a better solution for the world uh, and moral choices do come into play here. 
then you want to understand how the person uh, came to understand their particular point of view. What was their particular uh, impetus, their, their, their inducement to this particular point of view. If you can understand that, then you can understand how, uh, how other people could feel the exact same way. And you'll understand how these problems migrate from population to population. And we'll leave you here for now because uh, we are at the uh, end mark of this segment. I will come back in uh, just a few minutes to continue our thought. And, uh, yeah. Talking about uh, Miles Power and his uh, and others like him who do these debunking uh, for a life for a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a career or in many cases I would say a hobby uh, that there's a danger when you dismiss something as unscientific and that's simply saying that it's unscientific uh, is a dismissal you can't just simply say that something's unscientific saying something is unscientific is actually not scientific itself uh, science is about research, it's about pushing forward, it's about developing new understandings. Uh, and we were talking about how uh, when you want to understand a person's moral position and make a judgment on uh, as to whether it's correct or not correct, it's not a matter of simply attacking the person. And, and a matter of fact, uh, there's a lot to be said for attacking the person silly because they have a particular view uh, that is not necessarily what your moral position is. And the thing is, there is a consequence uh, beyond yourself to moral, moral decisions, to moral behavior. Uh, yes, we do have our opinions on moral behavior, but there is a beyond that. There is a, a moral truth that stands beyond us. And whether or not we choose to acknowledge this or not, uh, there will be consequences regardless of our particular opinions. And the thing is, let's take say, let's take say take the point where the and, and this is can be observed that in many cases when people make these bad moral choices, uh, that they violate a particular. Uh, moral standard that is beyond us that applies in many cases universally then the result of this particular uh, choice is going to have a detrimental or negative effect on the person making this particular choice I'll give an example when somebody says that when taking drugs there is no particular issue here no one's being hurt but then you see the drug addiction, you see alcoholism, you see the people out in the streets the way they are. Is there a detrimental effect to drug addiction, to, 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 to drug use? Yes, there is. And we know that. We know this historically that this is the case. And so if you want to prevent somebody from making a, a bad moral choice to begin with, so they don't suffer this pain. You need to understand what the attitude is, what the thinking is going into their minds when they're making this first decision, let's try this. In other words, they're saying, oh, I'm not going to get hurt. It's not going to hurt to try this once. And the thing is, you want to find some way of bringing about the reality that they are taking this particular risk but once you've taken, once you've gone past that point of saying, okay, here's the reality, here's what what, what could happen to you, is no longer within your control because you is again, it's not it was never in your control to begin with. It's always the person who's making the, that moral choice. It's always their choice to make the right choice or the wrong choice, whether it hurts them or not. And the thing is, unfortunately, we can't do anything to prevent somebody making a particular bad choice. What we can do is try and understand why the bad choice occurs 
And then if we can find ways to mitigate this bad choice, in other words, find ways to influence the person so that the person does not make these bad choices, then that's the path we take. But the thing is, if we close our minds to what the person is saying, and you'll find out there's a lot that many times when a person is taking a particular action, they're taking they're actually there is actually a particular a particular reason to why they're doing what they're doing. There is a not a logic behind it, so to speak, but an emotion behind it. And this, a lot of people don't understand this. Don't necessarily understand this. That we are as logical as we think we are. We are actually ruled by our emotions. Our emotions will over, more often than not override what we know and what we think in terms of our intellectual understanding of things. And I've seen this firsthand with people, you can, and the thing is, they make choices that are not sound choices, and you can wonder why these people, they're intelligent people, how they end up making the choices they end up making. And it's the very simple fact that, that there is an emotion there that overrides their particular uh, sense, their intellectual sense, and forces them, and forces them emotionally down a particular path that they, if they really understood the you know, or connected emotionally with it, would not have done. And so what happens is that we need to understand not only the intellectual causes of particular of a, a person's choice and uh, and point of view and how that develops, but we now need to understand the emotional connection to this as well. There's there's a, there are two components that we need to understand. And then once we start doing this, our our attitude toward uh, sort of offhand dismissal that oh, it's the old calendar. Who cares about that? Goes away because we start thinking. Well, well, maybe wait a minute. What are these people seeing that I'm not seeing? You know, why did they come to the position, particular position that they came to? Why did their opinion form the way it formed? And I think sometimes you might find something, and more often you might find something. You more often than not will find information that maybe we've never considered before. And that maybe you should start considering other particular views. Like, you know, we thought that our calendar was, the new calendar was the greatest calendar. You go into archaeology, you start looking at all these other calendars, like the Malayan calendar, the Aztec calendar, uh, their, their Hindu calendars. You go into all these archaeological sites where you find these uh, astronomical sites, these, these massive uh, structures, these pyramids, these uh, uh, what we call megalithic structures. The, the, these are the, these are the, these are the pyramids. These are the, all the ruins of these different cities, and you find out these cities are astronomically aligned. And you ask yourself how they did, it. and they start looking at uh, at the culture that was there. They start looking for the scientists and see that on the the pyramids themselves, that the, the hieroglyphs are actually calendar markings, and that they had an understanding of the calendar. Then our, that puts a whole new perspective on our new calendar. And so this is something that should also be considered when you're considering the old calendar and, the, and other people's Christmases, too. So, anyways, I'm going to leave that here. That's going to be it for now. Uh, I think we will talk about this more in the Insta Vlog. This is something that sort of comes into Insta Vlogs. Oh, I'll come back in a couple hours and uh, possibly end this for the 24th. Take it easy. Alrighty. It is time for the final segment of the BTS vlog for December 23rd and 24th. I'll give you the time and date stamp. Let's do that now. It's 22 hours and 45 minutes into the day of Tuesday, December 24th, 2013. And it's still Christmas Eve. I'm still at work. <laughs> still at the research desk. But this is kind of where I'm always at. I'm always at the research desk here. Uh, if I'm not doing anything else, this is where I usually am. So, uh, <coughs> things, have <coughs> things have been going very well. Uh, clearing a large chunk of the backlog that I have. A large chunk of the backlog. Uh, I'm even up to the point now where, uh, 
I'll be doing uh, tomorrow. Uh, I'll be editing the uh, uh, doing the final edit for the BTS vlogs for December 20, 20th to twenty third. So that will be going up tomorrow. Look for the, the BTS vlogs for December twentieth and twenty third to go up tomorrow. That's gonna. So what we're gonna be basically uh, as of tomorrow. We'll be about a day or two days behind on our vlogs. So that means we're clearing a lot of the backlog. Uh, and that means I'll be able to get back into the Insta vlog, back, get uh, uh, Beauty the Geek back on schedule again. Uh, in other words, things are starting to develop more. Things are starting to uh, sort of fall into place. The, the, the routine has begun here. Uh, and the research desk is working very well at this point. And this is sort of where I'm going to be going with this in the next uh, few weeks. Is I'm going to bring in uh, some uh, something known as prelim preliminary notes. The preliminary notes are the initial notes that I take. Uh, they're not they're not specifically organized. Uh, as I'm doing a YouTube, as I'm going around YouTube, as I'm doing my different research, doing do, do my different reading. I take these preliminary notes, and these notes give me the ideas that I later on develop into larger, more organized notes. For example, what we've what you've been watching now when I've been talking about Miles Power. Uh, it's not that I'm sort of picking on him. It's, that's how I'm going to be. He's going to be moving into an Insta vlog. I'll be, be talking about the entire issue surrounding Miles Power because there's a there's a large chunk to talk about. There's a lot of there's a lot to actually research there. As I said. D you don't. When somebody says something, you want to understand why they're saying what they're saying. You want to see what group of people they're involved with. What you know, you know who they are. And in other words, you really want to delve into a large chunk of the aspect, uh, their personal aspect of of what brings a person to say what they're saying, what brings them to their you know what experience brings them into this sort of point of view, and that way it gives you an understanding of uh, of, of how they. Arrived at their decisions the, the, uh, that they arrived at. In addition to looking into some of the uh, topic that the, you know, also looking into the topic that the, the, that they're talking about. So, uh, someone's debunking something. Let's go into the topic. Let's look at the look at the topic. How much information have they seen in it? What's missing from their 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 analysis? Uh, and that's sort of these these are the uh, the more in depth. Uh, notes that are in the insta vlogs, but to get to the insta vlogs, the preliminary notes have to occur, and that's what you've been watching uh, with Miles Power. Is you've been watching the preliminary notes, the sort of the initial note taking, the thought processes that will lead to uh, an insta vlog. And I'm going to be bringing more of that in here, we're doing more of that, uh, and it's going to be on a variety of different topics. Oh, so stay tuned for that, and I think I'm gonna cut this a little bit early today. Uh, cut this a little short. Uh, tomorrow is gonna be the BTS vlog for probably December 25th for Christmas, uh, Christmas Day, New Christmas Day, and I'll probably do a special on uh, on Christmas and uh, the variety of issues surrounding uh, Christmas. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow, bright and early, or whenever I get up. <laughs> it's it's ten, it's uh, twenty two hours and uh, forty nine minutes, or or ten fifty in the evening. So, anyways, I hear Santa sleigh coming. <laughs> All righty, take it easy.
here at Democratic Earth.